really climate risk as a financial risk um, is, is something that is being really heavily debated right now by a whole range of different actors in our global economy. You have um, a, a range of different analysis that would show, uh, including from ourselves, that would show that when you look at uh, investment portfolios and, and lending uh, loan books, and also when you look at companies in the supply chain, pretty much across the world, um, we see that the current trajectory of all of the activities in, in, in financial services and beyond would actually put us on a, a three to three and a half degree warming pathway, which according to the scientific consensus would be pretty catastrophic for many of our economic activities and result in very significant economic damage um, to our global economy and, and, and huge disruption. Um, so really, what, what, you know, to put it bluntly, unless we invest uh, in green technologies, in solutions to address climate change, the world will warm by three degrees or more um, with quite significant consequences. So what do we need to do? Well, on a macro level, about 1.5% of GDP would actually fund a climate transition um, by some estimates. Um, when you compare that with actually the cost of the current pandemic we, we sit in, the cost of the pandemic, according to the OECD this year, will be about 4.5% um, uh, decline in GDP globally. Um, so really, uh, we, we're talking a significant sizable amount of money would need to be invested for the transition, but not impossible amounts of money, according to some. In fact, according to many. Um, and in fact, when I say according to many, according to at least 60% of the world. So 60% of GDP has now committed to net zero carbon targets by uh, around 2050 or 2060. Uh, so more recently, we've seen uh, governments such as China, Japan and South Korea all committing to net zero targets. The U Europe has already done so and many other countries have already done so. Um, and that would amount to about 60% of global GDP. In fact, 1,100 companies have also signed up to net zero commitments. And we've also seen 50 plus financial institutions sign up to net zero commitments. And to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050, it might sound like a long way out, but, but actually there is a lot to do to, you know, it's not something you could leave to 2049 to achieve. Um, there's a lot of action that would need to happen to achieve that and quite a system wide structural change that at least needs to happen in this decade to even have a chance of achieving some of those targets. And so I think um, that that sets a very interesting um, space to discuss. I think um, we've seen a lot of recent announcements. For example, the UK government has now um, made it mandatory for companies and pension funds to report on climate risks for companies by 2022 um, and for pension funds, it's under consultation, but it, but it will be soon. Uh, the UK, uh, the Bank of England, the pension uh, and the PRA, the Pension Regulator Authority will be stress testing next year uh, and in particular stress testing banks. And so that's why we wanted to really talk about climate risk analysis in a financial context. What are the common practices today for, for institutions to, to manage climate risk as a financial risk yeah so so it's not um many of them have have started working on it but there's still a long ways to go and 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 if you think about the you know i i sometimes compare what the industry has done uh post financial crisis uh in the sense of you know really working for the next 10 years around upgrading risk systems, upgrading uh, capital management, upgrading stress testing capabilities, and it, it's been a long process. Um, this is also a pretty difficult challenge. So, so I think there are practices in place today, but there's still a lot of work to be done, um, not just in the US, but globally on, on this. If, if, if I look at what the you know, the, 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 the leaders are doing, they're really pushing to integrate climate considerations comprehensively into their risk management frameworks. So looking at um, governance, uh, how they organize themselves on the topic, looking at their risk appetite statements, um, of course, fundamentally looking at, at um, risk measurement and scenario analysis, as well as reporting, pricing, underwriting, kind of all these business applications of risk management. And, um, and, and 
there there's more progress in some areas i think than others there's there's a lot of work of course on the quantification piece that that um that we can talk about further um firms are also integrating climate into their individual risk policies and and they're beginning to integrate it into risk appetite in in many cases they're doing that in a qualitative manner but some are starting to work on actually quantitative metrics um in risk appetite as well um and then they're also updating their their sort of risk frameworks and taxonomies to make sure that they capture climate so some firms are adding a new category of risk that they call climate others are embedding climate across the different sort of risk stripes if you will um but all that is very much ongoing um in 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 leading global firms on the topic at this stage how do you integrate climate risk in credit risk analysis thank you for the question richard and hi everyone happy to join in this panel discussion uh, yes very simple very happy to get it for once a simple one given that i lead an analytical team we have actually um, indeed several challenges that uh, eliza and dilia uh, hinted to so the move actually towards uh, the proper uh, credible quantification of uh, uh, climate changes uh, uh, and, and the financial impact of climate change so there are several challenges obviously on the data side there is a very limited or uh, uh, coverage of company level carbon emission data not just direct emissions but also indirect emissions uh, uh, because companies are still uh, um, debating on how best to uh, report this information there are no clear standards uh, um, it's also important to understand where the, the companies are operating because often large corporations are operating in different countries uh, that are um, in essence subjected to different level of uh, carbon tax. Um, in addition to this, they may be exposed to different uh, types of uh, physical risks. And uh, so it's important as well to get an idea about this, this granular information about the geolocation of this, this data as well as obviously uh, the other part of the story that is the good coverage of the financials the current financials for these companies and uh, amalgamating everything together in order to link the two components so on one side the transition risk that we uh, are discussing now so the, the potential uh, increase of a carbon tax or the adaptation of companies to, to greener technology and on the other side the other side of the story that is the physical risk so if uh, obviously carbon tax doesn't increase fast enough for companies don't adapt physical risk is expected uh, as you Richard were mentioning before to, to increase both in severity and frequency so the good news is that um, at SP Global Market Intelligence we have uh, uh, developed uh, together with Oliver and Wyman a uh, suite of uh, tools quantifying the financial impact of climate change particularly for transition risk and particular at individual company level using very granular information that I can say we are a bit spoiled being part of S&P Global to have available as much as our users as well that can uh, in essence uh, quantify the, the fundamentals uh, the fundamentals impact and um, this is particularly, I, I think, relevant for banks who want to get a very deep, uh, good uh, understanding of the of the of the financial impact, uh, uh, especially for the large exposures in uh, in uh, energy intensive sectors. So, so there is a lot of work that we are doing as well, uh, as well to expand this this suite of models also to other sectors uh, using potentially top down approaches uh, where um, we don't have uh, uh, potentially enough data, as well as also integrating uh, physical risk. That's the other part of the story, I would say. Wonderful. So, so I think you're describing the climate credit analytics product, right, in terms of the models um, that are put together. I mean, Ilya, perhaps you could expand on that. So how, do, how, does the, yeah. how does the model actually work? How would you apply it in practical terms for a, a bank? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so, so maybe I could um, just to just to set the stage a little bit for it, um, we've been we've been working on this this topic of of how do we measure climate risks and how do we measure the the, the impact of climate on a uh, a portfolio of a f financial investments for some time, and there are like there are some fundamental challenges in doing that, and and I think and and what we've designed in climate credit analytics is is really a, a suite of approaches to address those challenges. But the the key challenges I would highlight are one we don't have the kind of historical data 
um, for climate events and, and the corresponding credit outcomes that, that we do in other areas, right? We, I, I, can't, I can't take a time series of climate and a time series of credit losses and form a relationship like I can do with GDP or other macroeconomic variables. Um, that, that's a key challenge. And as a result, what we need to do is something that is much more bottom up where we think through how does climate impact the fundamental company level drivers of performance. Um, that is something that requires a lot of data. We need to understand the, the specifics of the company, understand its business model, how it makes money, and how climate would impact that. And it requires you know, a very tailored set of analytics, sort of sector by sector to do it. Um, you know, the, the additional challenge here is, is that this is a new topic and it needs specialized expertise. We need to be able to evaluate um, what does a, a particular climate scenario mean in terms of the global economy and how, how companies are impacted? And, and the other element I would highlight is that these are sort of two different worlds up to now. There's the climate world, if you will, and the financial risk management world. And, and for something to be useful um, within a banking or, or other financial institution context, it needs to be in the language that, that those business professionals and, and risk managers use. And so <clears throat> what we've done in climate credit analytics is integrated these kind of climate considerations into a traditional credit risk management framework. So basically, um, an institution would specify, would, pr would provide information on, he here's the companies that we have in our portfolio, Here the here's the nature of our exposure, of our exposures, and then what we do in the modeling is um, link climate scenarios to, you know, so for example, a two degree scenario or a, or a three degree scenario, basically link those scenarios. And in particular, we use scenarios that are used by the, recommended by the NGFS and used in the climate science community broadly. We link those to the fundamental performance drivers for corporates. So how does climate impact the, the um, revenue of the company, the, the price of, of the product that it's selling, the, the volume of, of demand, their cost structure, how does it impact their capital expenditures? Uh, and then w with that fundamental uh, analysis, we can then reevaluate what is the financial impact of the scenario on the company? What does it mean in terms of their P&L, their balance sheet, and reassess the credit risk? And that, that brings together the, these tailored methodologies with S&P's very deep data, both on the companies and the, and the industry dynamics, uh, as well as the, the credit analytics that sit on the back end to reevaluate based on these, these financials, what is the implication for, for losses in the portfolio?